Thanks very much, Davis. Uh, let's see, where are we? So I'm happy to have a chance to come back up on stage and just kind of re reiterate what the Hazard Evaluation Emergency Response Office's perspective is on working with you. Really, we see that we have a shared goal with you. We all need to figure out where these contaminated sites are, figure out what the issues are, and work to get them protected so that you can safely reuse them. <laughs> Thinking back over Brownfield's forums in the past, back in 2009 we had a forum like this, followed by a stakeholder group meeting to figure out what were, the, what were big limitations in terms of Brownfields in Hawaii. And about 10 of the people who participated in that stakeholder discussion are in the room today. The upshot of that was identifying that our state brownfields protections were not the same as the federal brownfields protections and that the law needed to be changed. <laughs> so as a result of input from you, we worked with legislators and in 2011, I think, is when the law was actually changed. So we changed our law based on input from you and collaboration with you. So the take-home message is it really matters that we work together and figure out how to make redeveloping brownfields um, work better. The second example we haven't talked about today is talking about TOD and rail and HART. HART recognized from the beginning that there were contamination issues all along the route. So they chose to come into us early, consult early, entered into a voluntary agreement with us to develop a programmatic EHMP for the whole rail line so that all the contamination that they might run into along the way could be dealt with effectively. That's a really good model of what we are looking for and want to do with you on a small scale, big scale, depends on the size of your project. So there are lots of ways that the HERE office can help. Um, Melody, I don't know where you are right now. Um, anyway, she is uh, working on a brownfield inventory and will be available at 3 o'clock to talk with you. Um, we have developed a new inventory and we'll be actually reaching out to property owners to let um, all those folks know about what services we have available and also to be able to publish the brownfield inventory on our website. <clears throat> Um, you heard uh, Steve talk a little bit about area-wide approaches to risk management. Um, we also have been able to, as a result of, so EPA provides funding not only for events like this, but they provide us annual funding for program development. We use that funding to hire great scientists. Um, yeah. Uh, to develop state-of-the-art uh, investigation techniques, technical guidance um, on how to do cleanups. You heard Dan talk a little bit earlier about a new way we have of soil sampling. Sounds kind of complicated, um, but the end result is that you get a much better idea of what the risk is at your site for less money and in less time. Uh, Dr. Roger Brewer in our office usually presents at these events, but he's not available today, but has just recently also released um, state-of-the-art guidance on how to assess soil vapor intrusion in buildings. So again, this is where you have petroleum residues under your building that might affect the health and safety of residents or occupants of the building. <clears throat> um, one of the things you've also heard us talk about environmental hazard management plans. You won't go to another state in the country and find EHMPs. This is something uh, Dr. Brewer developed. And it has the same sorts of controls in place as institutional, you know, as traditional institutional controls, but includes mapping so that you can actually look at your property and say, oh, I have to be careful if I'm digging here. Oh, I have to be worried about children's exposure here. I need to be um, advising construction workers in this area. So again, just helping to develop tools to make um, your work easier and better. <clears throat> A uh, couple resources, and I'll post this again at the end, is our website, lots of information online. Um, we have something called contaminant awareness training. If you have a group of people who will be working on a contaminated site, construction workers, employees, et cetera, who want to understand a little bit more about um, what kinds of things they might encounter in a site, we provide that service for free. Um, can come out and train your company, trained about 35 um, 
different organizations, a lot of them construction companies, um, engineers, etc. cetera. Uh, we also have periodic partnership training events. And now, thanks to Jordan, we have our, own, our very own YouTube channel. And in fact, this event will be posted on that within a few days. <clears throat> uh, this is just a map to show you, uh, to talk about our contaminant awareness training. We have one of these for each island and talks about what the specific contaminant areas of concern are on each of those islands. <clears throat> and to give you an idea of some of our webinars, um, we have Steve is a great presenter. Roger also presents the same way. So when we're talking about things like sampling, the last presentation that was just went up last week was about how sampling can be described using salad. <laughs> so um, to understand the complexity and uh, you know how uh, contamination might be distributed across your site. All of these seminars are available online. You can just watch them. Um, and they're a part of an ongoing training program that we're developing so that our Brownfields community can really understand what the issues are that confront them at sites. Uh, Steve talked a little bit about the area-wide uh, EHMP approaches. This is just a map to show you the area in Evale that is covered by the new, our newest programmatic EHMP. So the red areas here are all sites that have been thoroughly investigated through the remedial process that Steve described. And each of these properties have site-specific EHMPs. So this, for example, is the ConocoPhillips terminal. Um, there's Gasco property here. Um, but all the rest of the blue areas are areas we know have petroleum in the ground. And so you can follow. If you're doing work in that area, you own a property in the area, you can refer to that document to understand what you might encounter if you need to do construction there. You have to build a grease trap. You have to replace a utility line that document gives you a head start. <laughs> and just because I have to say this 20 times each time, it really does matter if you come and that you come and talk to us and consult with us. First of all, you have to do it if you found a release so that you don't end up getting in trouble both with our emergency responders or, the, or fall into the one place that we can actually find you. So if you come across, you dig a hole and there's petroleum in it, there's a 24-hour number you need to call us. Um, if you, and there is not a penalty for calling. There's a penalty for not calling. So, and again, that's the reason that we feel so strongly about that is it's to protect human health and the environment. Um, you don't have to call us when you, um, unless you have a release or a direct hazard on your property. But again, we suggest that you do, again, even before you've discovered those, whether or not you have those issues on on your site. Um, and as you heard from Scott, um, reducing uncertainty by understanding what the regulatory process is and what conditions exist on your site is going to make your development go much more quickly and effectively. Um, this is how you can get a hold of me. Uh, Phoenix Range, pretty easy name to find on the internet. <laughs> you get my phone number here if you can't find it there. Similarly, with the uh, here website, if you just look up Hawaii Here, H-E-E-R, you'll find the website. And again, go on YouTube and look for Here webinar, you'll find the information there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Phoenix. Uh, well, I hope you have the impression that the, the Here office of the Department of Health, Environment and Health Administration is very approachable. Now, the Brownfields program really is about facilitating the development of potentially contaminated property. It is not intended at all to, to pro prohibit or interfere. It's really to find a solution to whatever issues might exist. Uh, next, we're going to, uh, we had a little buffer time in there for summary and closing, but uh, what I want to do is just ask, does anybody have any comments or questions that they would like to ask in this few moments? Or maybe I should say, what questions and comments would you like to offer in these few moments? Yes, in the back there. Um, wait a second, let me get you a microphone. While, and while it's coming there, uh, we're going to have three discussion tables. Can I, Dan, could you stand up, please? Because you're going to lead one. 
And uh, Gail, could you? Yes. And um, Ignacio, who's already standing up. Um, we're going to, oh, and Eleni, we're going to have a table on um, transit oriented development. Environmental issues will be Dan, and grants and loans will be Ignacio and Noemi, and we'll designate those tables. So please make your comment. Oh, no, I just had a question for either Stephen or maybe Phoenix. For the area wide programmatic agreements, who's paying for these, and sort of how, if I have a bunch of neighbors who want to put something like this together and get a study done, how do we go about doing that? So, so far, programmatic EHMPs, we have two, two flavors. Hart did one for their entire rail line, and we have proactively done one for Evelé. Actually, there's one more example, which is that um, the red areas that were on the map before, many of those were cleaned up by IDPP, the Evelé District Participating Parties, which is a group of responsible parties. So they also put out a programmatic EHMP for their properties. Programmatic EHMPs, um, we'd certainly entertain the idea of uh, property owners working on a collective EHMP. We haven't seen that other than that in the examples that I just discussed. At this point, we are working to develop programmatic EHMPs to give um, advanced information to folks in areas that, where we know it's contaminated. Right now, we're working on one for Kahului Harbor. And we're considering also whether we might want to do one, for example, along the Dillingham area. I don't know if that answered your question. I'm available after if you'd like to ask as well. Yeah, and that's a potential grant question too, because that's something that some cities do is that they actually do an area-wide cleanup approach. That you would have to get a city or the state to sponsor you, but you could probably you could that's an option also. You know, I hadn't thought about that, being able to use that to actually develop cooperative EHMPs for a neighborhood is a fabulous idea. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else that would like to ask a question or offer a comment? We do have some refreshments. Uh, get your refreshments. We, are, we have a little extra time. We're going to have the environmental discussion table over here. We'll have the transit-oriented development issues table uh, in the center. And then we'll have the grants and loans in the back corner. Sorry, also Melody Calisea is going to, where are you going to be, Melody? So how about if we have a you, another table over there, if you're particularly interested in um, the Brownfields inventory and the state Brownfield program, Melody will be right nearby and can assist you with that as well. Melody, raise your hand just so everybody knows who you are. All right, thanks. 